Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the show. Go be great with Coach Karina. I am your coach, your mindset and life coach, Karina Calhoun, and I have an amazing guest today. I have Terry Tucker with us on today, and I am super excited because, listen, 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 listen. I know this is going to be a conversation where jewels, gems, and all kinds of wisdom will be dropped. Terry, how are you on this great day? I am great, Karina. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Absolutely. So, Terry, tell us where in the world are you located right now? Uh, right now, I'm in Denver, Colorado, but I, I was born on the south side of Chicago. That's where most of my family still is. But Denver, Colorado's home right now. Awesome. I love it. So what actually took you to Denver from Chicago? Uh, actually, my wife's job. Uh, my wife has always been the primary breadwinner. So we'll we kind of go where she goes. And we were in Houston uh, before this. She got an opportunity. She's in the financial management section. She got an opportunity to uh, get a job at Janus here in Denver. And we've been here for about nine years. Wow, I love it. You know, and I just want to pin something. I want to park something right there. You said your wife has been primarily the breadwinner. And you don't say that with any shame, any regret nothing. I absolutely love that. I spoke with someone on yesterday and we were talking about this whole dynamic of not having gender roles in the household. And it sounds like you all have really mastered that. So I just want to have space here to say kudos to you and your wife for that, because when you can really dive into that and everyone is on the same page, it is phenomenal inside the household. Are there, are there any words of wisdom you want to give? for anyone listening as far as that's concerned? I think it, you know, it has to be a, a mutual give and take. You know, when my wife married me, I was a suit and tie eight to five, Monday through Friday hospital administrator. And a, a couple of years into our marriage, I, I went to her and I said, look, I, I wanna be a police officer, you know, and that's an entirely different pivot. And, you know, she could have said, oh no, you know, I mean, the, the family dynamic, how that affects us, yeah, I, I don't wanna do that. But she was incredibly supportive of me, you know, sort of dipping my toe in the water and see if I liked it. We were living in Santa Barbara, California at the time. I, I did do that. I loved it. When our daughter was born, we moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. And I told her, I said, look, I want to do this full time. She supported me in that. And then she ended up losing her job in Cincinnati. Wow. So it was time for me to support her when we had to move to Houston. So it's always been a mutual give and take. And you know, we love each other. We care about each other. And, you know, I learned that from my parents. So it just carried over to our relationship. I love that. I love that. What a way to start this conversation with those jewels and gems really just hitting home right there, because we see so much of this going on in the family dynamic, specifically because COVID came about. When Once the pandemic hit, we saw a lot of that going on. So Terry, I really want to dive into your company, your business, what you're doing, the service that you're providing to the world these days. I am absolutely, positively enamored with this, what you're doing. So I want you to just go ahead and tell us the name of your company and the products and services that you're providing the world right now. So the company is called Motivational Check LLC. Um, for the last 10 years or so, I've been battling cancer. So I, working any kind of a full-time job for somebody else just wasn't fair or realistic based on the treatments that I've had. So I had to kind of figure out my purpose, my niche in life. As a matter of fact, before we jumped on to this, I was listening to the podcast you were doing on purpose. And it was just, it was fun for me to listen to that. And so I, so I had to determine what my purpose in life was in lieu of this disease. So I made the brilliant business decision to start a motivational speaking business right in the middle of the COVID pandemic. So wow. I don't know if your audience wants to take anything I have to say to heart because I was so goofy in, in making that decision. But what I've done is sort of morph that into podcasts. And, and I, I try to put as much goodness, positivity, love, motivation back into the world. And I, I've been a guest on probably over 500 podcasts around the world talking about that concept. And that was just because during COVID, nobody was doing in-person guests and, you know, for speakers and stuff like that. So I've done that. I wrote a book during that time as well. And I've recently started a, uh, a membership program 
based on my book. So, so that's pretty much what motivational check is all about right now. I love it. You know, and just the fact that, yeah, it does probably sound a little goofy that maybe, you know, hey, listen, you start a business, a motivational business, for that matter, in the middle of a pandemic, but then take a step back. The fact that you are battling this disease that we all despise with, you know, just loathe it, but you do that as well. And so it seems to me that you're taking these situations and you are allowing them to be stepping stones for other people as they continue to push forward. You're, it's almost as if, Terry, you're taking the excuse away. You know? I think so. Yeah, in a lot of ways. I mean, I look at it like, you know, we're all going to experience pain in our lives. And it doesn't have to be cancer or any kind of an illness. It could be, you know, as simple as you break up with your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, or you don't get the promotion at work that you believe you deserve. Pain in our lives is inevitable. Suffering, suffering is optional. You know, suffering is what oh. you do with that pain. You know, do you take it and use it to make you a stronger and more resilient individual? Or do you wallow in it and feel sorry for yourself and want other people to feel sorry for you? It's a choice on how you want to handle this. And as I mentioned, I, I have cancer. I'm being treated. I tr I'm treated every three weeks at the hospital. And I, I kind of look at that as sort of a, of a dual handed uh, sort of tea kettle. It's the, it, do you want to grab the handle of I have to do this or I get to do this? You know, I, I, do I have to go to treatment? Do I have to go to work? Do I have to do whatever? Or do I get to do this? And for me, you know, having cancer, it's all about I get to do these kind of things. I love this. I, I absolutely love this. You know, that what you said about, you know, yes, you're going to go through this pain, but the suffering is optional. I want to back up and park right there. Talk to us a little bit more about that, because it seems to me you have that really pinned very well. And I, I want to drive that home because right now, the really the landscape we're just going to be we're going to dial in a little bit just to america the landscape of america is just across the board absolutely for just crazy just phenomenally crazy in so many aspects and there's not just one specific thing there's so many different things and then of course we hear my prior life i was in the mortgage business and so for 20 plus years. And so knowing what's coming down the pike right now, you know, there's just so much turmoil that's coming, that's already happening, so many different things. I want you to really dial into that difference between the pain and the suffering. I know you've already talked about that a little bit, but let's just really kind of drive that home a little bit. I think that's where we want to want to really go today because man, this is good. This is good. Sure. So, I, you know, our brains are hardwired to avoid pain and discomfort and to seek pleasure. So, you know, to the brain, the, the status quo, the way things are right now is comfortable and familiar and should just be left alone. And for most people, that's fine. But for a lot of people, it's not, you know, they, they, they want to they want to grow. They want to develop. They want to expand. And, and the only way to do that is to move outside your comfort zone. And the way to do that is to do things that make you uncomfortable. One of the jobs that I had when I was, was younger was I was a high school girls basketball coach. And I used to constantly remind my players that they needed to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, and I, I try to do this, and I'll recommend this to your audience. I, I, I try to do this every day of my life. Do one thing, and it doesn't have to be a big thing, do one small thing that, that makes you nervous, that makes you uncomfortable, that, that scares you, that's potentially embarrassing. Because if you do those small things every day, when the big disasters in life hit, and they hit all of us, we lose somebody who's close to us, we get let go from our job, we find out we have some kind of a chronic or a terminal illness. If you do those small things every day, when the big disasters in life hit, you'll be so much more resilient to handle those things when they present themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love this. Now, I know during our conversation, you spoke about a membership that you started. Talk to us a little bit about that and what someone can expect to join. Yeah, the membership is, I, I wrote a book back in 2020 uh, 
Actually, I wrote it in the time period. I had my leg amputated in 2020, and I started chemotherapy for the tumors in my lungs in June of 2020. And so I, I wrote the book in that three-month period where, where I was healing. And the book is called Sustainable Excellence, The 10 Principles to Leading Your Uncommon and Extraordinary Life. And I've had enough people reach out to me after reading the book that were like, you know, I want to go deeper. I, I want to, you know, I, I want to learn more. I want to figure out how I can apply those principles in my life. And so I was really hesitant initially to do a membership. I, I, I made a decision when I started doing podcasts that I would never pay to be on a podcast and I would never get paid to be on a podcast. I wanted to give this information. I wanted to give the things that I've learned to people just to help them, to make the world a better place. But enough people started suggesting that I do this membership. And so the membership is really sort of a deep dive into each of the 10 principles, in addition to having a, a community that you can be part of with like-minded people that are that are trying to do the same thing. And you know, I, I don't sit here and purport to have all the answers about everything, but you, you know, it, to, to put a group together of people that are all kind of at different points or different phases, they're all trying to get to the same goal. I think it's it, it's probably more productive. I, it's funny because I find people now sometimes I, I have weekly videos and things like it. People won't watch the videos, but they'll be part of the member or the part of the community because they get more out of just talking or interacting with a, a live human being instead of watching a video. So that's pretty much what the membership is about. I mean, it, it is really in its infancy right now, but it's something I'm excited about to see where it goes and see how we can grow it. Absolutely. I love that. You know, a lot of times what people are missing is that aspect of community. And one thing that we have to remember is transparency and community is where we thrive. And, and I, I say that even for myself from experience, because I've had to specifically being an introvert. And I tell people this all the time. I am a diehard introvert, you know, just getting ready for this particular episode. I had to prepare for it because there's things as an introvert we have to do. And so just really that transparency and that community is where we're able to really grow and be who we need to be. Because when we are isolated, that is where the darkness comes, that voice that is not kind, that voice that, you know, and like you, you said earlier, our brain is designed to protect us. And certainly our, our, those negative thoughts that we have, they're there for a reason. And, and granted, I do understand that. But sometimes, oh my goodness, it seems like those voices can really, really just close in on people. On You're us. absolutely right. You know, yeah. and, and I've learned that through cancer, you know, and having a disease like cancer, it does isolate you. It isolates you from your friends. It isolates you from your family. And a lot of times it isolates you from yourself. You know, yes. you don't want to be alone with yourself because you're afraid, you know, of how you're going to be able to confront those things that, that you're talking about. You know, and we're talking about a disease, but you that those same negative aspects of your mind, they, they happen, you know, when you, you, you're trying, oh, am I going to start a business? Am I going to, you know, and I always tell, especially young people, if there's something in your heart, something in your soul that you believe you're supposed to do but it scares you, go ahead and do it. Yes. Because at the end of your life, the things that you're going to regret are not going to be the things you did. They're going to be the things you didn't do. And by then it's going to be too late to go back and do them. You know, that's a very good point because I sit here and I think I will be 51 this year. And when I think about the things that I've done in my life compared to the things that I didn't do in my life, I don't care about the things that I've done, you know, more so than the things that I did not do. Because those are the things that I'm looking at, what do I need to do today to make sure that's checked off my list at the end? Of, because I tell people the last thing I want to do when I leave this earth is to leave with all of my purpose still bottled up inside of me. I don't want the assignment that was on my life to be 
to really still be in me. I want it to be all poured out as I have lived my life. So this has absolutely been phenomenal. So are there any last words that you want to, to leave or any, any projects that you're working on? First, let me say this, or ask this, are there any projects that you're working on that you want to tell us about? You told us um, about your book and your membership. Yeah, th those are the, the two things that I'm really focused on right now. I mean, the membership, like I said, it's really at its infancy. So I I'm spending quite a bit of my time trying to develop that, make it better, you know, write scripts, do research and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. You know, and, and because it's in his infancy, that actually, for those that are listening, you want to really connect with Terry. And you all know, I say this all the time. People ask me, Karina, why do you have people on your show that do some of the same things you do? Because it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. You, as long as you get what you get. You know, you may feel more connected to Terry. And if you do, please feel free, reach out to Terry, join his membership, grab his book and get exactly what you need. And the fact that the membership is in its infancy, listen, you can become one, you know, I like to call them founding members. You're able to really see from beginning to you know end what it is and how it's grown and have some kind of input simply because I'm sure Terry is gonna be listening to what you're saying you know, as far as what you want. So because it's in his infancy does not mean it's not amazing because just listening to Terry, I know it's amazing. I know it is. I know absolutely that it is. So Terry, what are some last, maybe one or two uh, words of wisdom that you want to leave with everyone? Could I leave, leave you with a final story? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I've always been a big fan of Westerns growing up. You know, uh, my mom and dad used to let me stay up and late and watch, you know, Gunsmoke and Bonanza. And my favorite was Wild Wild West. 1993, the movie Tombstone came out. You may have seen it. It was a, it was a huge blockbuster. It starred Val Kilmer as a man by the name of John Doc Holliday and Kurt Russell as a man by the name of Wyatt Earp. Now, Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp were two living, breathing human beings who walked on the face of the earth. They're not made up characters just for the movie. Now, Doc was called Doc because he was a dentist by trade, but pretty much Doc Holliday was a gunslinger and a card shark. And Wyatt Earp had been a lawman most of his adult life. And somehow these two men from entirely divergent backgrounds come together and form this very close friendship. And at the end of the movie, Doc Holliday is dying at a hospital in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. The real Doc Holliday died at that hospital and he's buried in the Glenwood Springs Cemetery. And Wyatt at this point in his life is destitute. He has no money, he has no job, he has no prospects for a job. So every day he comes to play cards with Doc and the two men pass the time that way. And in this almost final scene, the two men are talking about what they want out of life. And Doc says, you know, I was in love with my cousin when I was younger, but she joined a convent over the affair, but she's all that I ever wanted. And then he looks at Wyatt and he says, what about you, Wyatt? What do you want? And Wyatt kind of nonchalantly says, I just want to lead a normal life. And Doc looks at him and says, there's no normal, there's just life and get on with living yours. Karina, you and I probably know people. There may be people in your audience right now that are sort of sitting back and saying, well, when this happens, I'll have a normal life. Or when that happens... I'll have a successful life. Or when this arises, I'll have a significant life. What I would like to leave your audience with is this. Don't wait. Don't wait for life to come to you. Get out there. Find the reason you were put on the face of this earth. Use your unique gifts and talents and live that reason. Because if you do, at the end of your life, I'm going to promise you two things. Number one, you're going to be a whole lot happier. And number two, you're going to have a whole lot more peace in your heart. If you are not motivated after that, <laughs> check inside because I have watched Tombstone a thousand times, but I tell you, you just put it into a different perspective and I absolutely love it. So Terry, tell us how we can get in touch with you. And for those that are listening, those that have been with me for any length of time, you know that we do have clickable notes in the show notes or clickable links in the show notes. So if you don't catch it, that's fine. But one thing I do want to say before Terry gives us that information, go back and listen to this entire episode. Listen to it on repeat until you actually digest this and then it digests you. And the reason why I say that is because there is so much in this 
that will help you begin to move the needle in your life. And you really need to be able to do that so that you can feel fulfilled and so that you can help other people do what they need to do because they're waiting on you to really get in line and do what you're supposed to be doing. So Terry, tell us how we can get in touch with you. So I have a blog. Uh, every day I put up a thought for the day. And with that thought comes usually a question about maybe how you could apply that thought in your life. On Mondays, I put up the Monday morning motivational message, which sometimes is a video or a story that I find online and things like that. And that's all at motivationalcheck.com. You can leave me a message there. There are recommendations for books and videos to watch. My podcast interviews are on there. So motivationalcheck.com will get you to me. I love it. Terry, thank you so much for being here on the show today. Listen, folks, this has been another amazing episode of Go Be Great with Coach Karina. I have had Terry Tucker here on the show. And again, listen and listen again. Put it on repeat, digest it, and go be great. Bye, everybody. <laughs>